really big shopping trip. $400 later. So I am headed to the farmer's market to pick up a few staples. So when we go, we try to get everything that we need. So this is the farmer market that I go to and I'll take you guys with me. The things I like to do when I go to the grocery store is bring my own one hand wipe. I actually cook with tofu quite a bit at the house. I add it to soups for a protein if I'm not using meat. We can do it as desserts. So I usually pick up a few packets of this. Use the firmer tofu for frying and the softer tofu typically for soups. We'll pick up some white radishes that I can use for soup, but also Vietnamese pickle like a dojua. Some napa cabbage for soup. The wipe that we got from the car is handy to open the bag. Starting to get into cooking more outside of Vietnamese food, so Korean food, Japanese food, and things like that. So they have a whole wall dedicated to kimchi and ban banchans, those little side dishes. While I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up a thing of kimchi for how. I haven't gotten into kimchi just yet, but if this is a good brand, let me know. I use quite a bit of ginger at home. We can add them to soups, um, add them to dumplings, ginger scallion sauce that I make with some chicken that Aspen really likes. We're gonna pick up some squash and bitter melon. Again, I use these in soups, noticing that I make a lot of soups at the house. I went on a Thursday, which is their usually restock day, so they really had everything nice and fresh, which was nice. Picking up a packet of chives, which is also again good for soups with tofu and pork. We utilize a lot of fresh vegetables and a lot of pork in our soups typically. And when I want more exotic type of fresh greens, uh, the farm market is really where you need to go. You can find a lot of mushrooms here aside from the typical, you know, portobello mushrooms or things like that or button mushrooms at the regular grocery store. Again, a lot of fresh greens, a lot of vegetables that you typically don't have at Kroger or Walmart and things like that. But they also still have um, regular products, so green onions, parsley, leeks, all those they also have here. So if you want to really do like a one-stop shop, this wouldn't be a bad place to try. So go ahead and get our mung beans or bean sprouts here. They have two different types. And here are all the green vegetables that they have, green leafy vegetables. These green vegetables, you can stir fry them, you can boil and bitch blanch them, or as we like to do at soups. They also have a whole bunch of pots, pans, bowls, saucers, anything that you can really think of you can get here, which is great. I am actually looking for a new strainer. The strainer that I have is the really meshy one and it's starting to break down and the mesh part is starting to get really sharp. So I may get this one, large enough, but not too large. Lots of cute plates for kids. Now all these are plastic. We're trying to move a little bit away from plastic, but they have all those. These were the mesh strainers that I was talking about that I have at home that I'm gonna get rid of. And you have your infamous sriracha. This is about $6.29 for each one. And then I'm picking up some cabbage. Look at all the different types of cabbage versus if you went to the American grocery store, there's probably only one type. You should get my garlic and shallots here as well. They have a plethora of instant noodle ramen. Look at all the pinatas up there. Now we're gonna head toward the meat section of the store. Since this is an international market, they're gonna have lots of different cuts of meat that you probably wouldn't typically find at their original American stores. They have pork belly, which is really sold out. Usually this is completely full. Not only will you find the different cuts of beef meat, but you'll also find different cuts of pork meat as well. Different cuts of meat reflects the different populations that really shop here. Asians and also Hispanics are really big in this market. And we head towards the sauce, condiments, and seasoning aisle. I like to use this particular pho seasoning for our broth. Everything is included in the package, including a little spice bag, which is great and convenient. This is the fish sauce that we like to use. It's the Three Crab brand, and these are the different prices between different ones. And I think for fish sauce, it is safe to say that the higher the quality, usually it's gonna be more expensive. We go through quite a bit of dry shallots in our cooking. Um, it's a great topper for a lot of foods, soups, uh, a lot of noodle dishes uses fried shallots, and I'm not really particular about which brand I use for this, but I do like to have a couple on hand at home because we go through it so quickly. Here's a big thing of the fish sauce that I saw. I don't think I've ever seen this big of a size, but this is, I did the math, and it's actually about the same price for the small bottle versus the big bottle per ounce. Again, a lots of seasonings for different types of cuisines throughout the store. They're pretty well stocked here, I must say. different 
curries on this owl. Um, it's Indian curry, there's Thai curries on here. I'm not gonna pick any up today. I think I had a couple at home. You'll also find the cooking wine in this section of the store. This is the one that I have that I like. It's kind of a medium gray cooking wine. And of course you wanna cook that out before you consume, especially if you're pregnant, breastfeeding, or you just don't like to consume alcohol. Then we come into the soy sauce and the oyster sauce side of the store. These are really savory type of salty sauces used in a lot of our cooking again. I always like to have a couple of these soy sauces. These are the ones that I like. It's $3.29 a bottle. I know a lot of people like the Maggie's soy sauce or seasoning sauce as well, but this is kind of my go-to. I kind of grew up with that. And then on this other side here, there's gonna be your bamboo shoots. There's a lot of canned veggies that I usually don't ever see fresh, really. So I pick up a couple of the bamboo shoots. These are good for braising type of foods. So if there's a day that I wanna cook vegetarian food or if I wanna add it to a braised pork, the bamboo shoots really cut the fattiness of the braised pork. Here are the oyster sauces. This brand here is quite expensive compared to the Panda brand and I haven't noticed a big difference when cooking with it, so I usually just go to the Panda brand on that one. I finally found the area of the store that sold the light soy sauce and the dark soy sauce. A lot of the recipes that I've seen utilizes both of them. Of course, the darker one for the color, really. It should taste about the same, I believe. Let me know in the comments if that's true or not, but I'm gonna pick up one light soy sauce and one dark soy sauce. It may seem that we utilize so many different sauces in our cooking, and we kind of do. It's just kind of to give that umami type of flavor. I'm picking up some ponzu sauce for our dumplings, our steamed dumplings or fried dumplings. My cart is getting pretty full at this point. It can be quite intimidating going to a big grocery store like this where they have so many different products on the shelves. But if you go in with a particular product that you need, I would just keep an open mind, you know, just go looking for it. And it gives you an opportunity to browse some of the other products that are out there too. Go ahead and pick up some more hoisin sauce for the house. This is most famous for eating with pho, the Vietnamese beef noodle soup. But you can also use it for marinades and making other sauces as well. I also like to browse the Korean side of this grocery store with their sauces and marinades as well. I like to look at the label sometimes just to see if there's anything that I wouldn't personally like in a product. And so I'm putting that original soy sauce back and then this other one. So all down this aisle, you have different rice products to the right, but also all of the other, um, usually good Korean braised products on this aisle. You have the potato starch and things like that. You get down to the gochujang type of sauce, the pepper paste. And this is the one that I have at home that I use to make in the bibimbap sauce. And they have different um, soybean paste here as well. Everything you really need for Korean cooking, you can find this portion of the store. Any one of those products I would recommend you have on hand if you want to kind of explore the Korean cooking just because those will be the base of a lot of their things. The other thing I like to get here is my chicken bouillon powder. This is the brand that I like. Again, it's a Korean braised brand and one of our friends actually put us on this brand and I like it a lot. My mom likes it too, so I'll get her one while I'm here. The other thing that they are kind of known for are these little seasoning packets and I couldn't read any of this. It was all in Korean. So I used the Google Translate app and was able to see exactly what this product were, what these two products were, and I ended up giving um, both of those a try. I used these sweet potato noodles to make japchae, and it looks like the only bag size they have right now is this large one, so we'll just get that. It's just an easy meal to put together. That one was non-GMO, which is great. We try to reach for those when we can, um, especially at an international market. Sometimes you'll find it, sometimes not. You get our nori here for our kimbap and our sushi rolls. I think I have quite a bit left that we got off of Amazon. I'm not gonna pick any up today. If you just go and explore throughout the grocery store, you'll find lots of interesting things. That's what I was doing here. I didn't have any specific things I was gonna get in this kind of refrigerated frozen section, but it's nice just to see what other products they had. This is a pretty popular brand, the, um, the Bibigo for Korean food. I wanted to try their fried rice, so I ended up picking up a bag of that while I was here just to kind of give that a taste. I usually do my own fried rice at home, but just looking up at the ingredients, there wasn't, it looks like a lot, but there wasn't a lot of extra things that I wouldn't have put in there anyways. So we're gonna try that. I saw these vegetable pancakes that we usually get at Korean barbecues. 
so I'm gonna give that a try. And they had the meat version or the seafood version as well. Miso paste is another ingredient that's pretty versatile. Of course, you can use it to make miso soup, which is popular at Japanese restaurants. But you can also make miso noodles. You can use a miso as marinade and put it on top of salmon. It's a really good product to have in your fridge. Lots of other fresh noodles here as well. And I pick up the Chinese sausage, also a good staple to have in your fridge. Good in fried rice, good with just plain rice if you're too lazy to cook any other thing as your protein. This area had some prepared foods such as the pad thai that's already made, just kind of heated up I think in a skillet. I haven't tried that before, but these are where your Korean rice cakes are. Rice cakes are also good to have in the freezer. You can add those to soups, you can add it to ramen noodles. Those are pretty versatile because it's just really a piece of dough and it can soak up whatever you put it in. Salted duck egg is another ingredient I keep in my fridge just because you can add this to rice porridge, a plain rice porridge, and that will be your protein and your saltiness. That's good for, again, if you're not in the mood to cook, you can just whip up some porridge and add that duck egg to it. I go ahead and pick up a pack of wonton wrappers while I'm here. You can get this in the frozen section. You can also get this at the American grocery store too, but this is great to have on hand, especially since I'm starting to make Aspen chicken dumplings for school and also cheese fried wontons. Another thing that I pick up are udon noodles. Udon noodles are great, again, for soups, but you can also use it as stir fry. And I try to have a couple of those in the freezer at all times. Again, it's a quick thing to just whip up. Picking up some dried sliced wood ear mushrooms, great for putting into a Vietnamese steamed pork patty. Pick up some palm sugar, which my mom uses to make a lot of Vietnamese dessert or called jam. It's a great sugar alternative and it gives it a little bit more depth of flavor. I also like to go ahead and pick up some quail eggs while I'm here. The grocery store that we go to, Whole Foods, does have quail eggs fresh, but I'm not comfortable boiling and making those myself, so I just buy them in the can. I pick up some coconut soda. This we use a lot for in braising liquids. This will help you get that umami flavor from your food instead of just putting plain water as the liquid. Also going to pick up some wasabi powder. We use wasabi powder when we were in Japan and how I actually thought it was okay. And I do some kimbap, sometimes I do some sushi rolls at home and it'll be good to have this. And then we get into the frozen section of the store. Lots of products here, depending on what you're trying to do. You know, certain recipes will call for certain things that you'll be able to get at the other stores. So they'll come here and most likely you'll find it. I like to get our noodles, our egg noodles in this section. They do also have the egg noodles in the dry section, but I feel like the frozen tastes a little bit better. The brand that I usually like is out of stock. Everything was kind of out of stock from the frozen section today. So I'll just get this other brand. These noodles are good to have on hand. Okay, I think that's all we're gonna get. My cart is filled to the broom. And I gotta get home for Brody, he's up. That's the end of our shopping trip. Hopefully you guys found some of that helpful in terms of kind of what I buy as uh, what we need for the house typically. It's a really big shopping trip and I only go really to this store not very often, but like once every couple of months. So I really have to stock up. We can get everything else typically at the American supermarket, you know, how like Whole Foods and things like that. $400 later, that was quite the eventful shopping trip. I hope you guys got a chance to kind of see what I use at our house for things that typically we would reach for a lot when we're doing lots of Vietnamese cooking at home. But just cooking at home, I'm able to know exactly what I put in the food, the ingredients and things like that. And it just kind of feels more fulfilling when I cook. If you guys liked videos like this, just let me know in the comment section and what I should think about doing next.